if this particular model responds with the right answer, which should be three, and it explains why that is the case, I think that is showing signs of great reasoning capabilities or more advanced and complex reasoning capabilities. That's what I'm testing here. So I'm very curious. Oh, wow. So we say, it says here, since all candles were the same length when they were lit, the one that was blown out first would have burnt for the shortest time and therefore be the longest. Looking at the figure, I can see that candle tree is the longest, which means it was blown out first. So the answer is three. Okay, so this is very, very impressive. Meta just released Llama 3.1. So it's already here. It's really exciting. They have an 8 billion, 70 billion, 405 billion versions are now available. I'll summarize the details first, at least the main takeaways from this particular release. And what I'll do next as well towards the end of this video, I'm going to go through some examples of testing this particular model, and I'm going to use fireworks, inference endpoints. In terms of the results, this is what we have here. And these are some benchmarks. These are the common ones that we see with MMLU and so forth. You can see the summary of it. So this one is comparing the previous checkpoint with this llama tree, which is the April 8 billion. This one was the 70 billion uh, in April, but we obviously don't have a 405 billion previously. So this will be the result now for the latest large model that they are releasing. In general, this particular model is super strong, but you can also see that this 70 billion is very strong as well. So if you compare these two models, there are some improvements on, on some benchmarks, but you can see that in some cases it's very close as well. So this is a really powerful model as already. So this 3.1 is something I think to really look into more closely. So this one compares with other models. What you can see here is the results compared with other models like Gemma 2. So the 8 billion 3.1 with Gemma 2. 9 billion instruction tune. So this one completely outperforms this particular model. They also compare 3.170B with 3.5 Turbo. But anyways, so the last one is the interesting one for me, the 405 billion. I believe this is probably the biggest and most capable open large language model available today. And the comparison with Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is interesting. This is a stronger model as has been shown on several benchmarks now compared to GPT-4 Omni. So this is GPT-4 O. You can also see that Llama 3.1 405 billion also has very strong performance on a lot of these benchmarks. So I would say it is almost at the level of GPT-4 O and very close in performance with 3.5 Sonnet. So it's really closing in the gap. So they have a link to the paper here if you're interested in. I'm also thinking about doing a more deeper dive on this particular paper. It's a very, very lengthy paper with a lot of details, how they do the training, how they select their data and so on. What I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna keep it very short just to give you more or less the TLDR, the takeaways. So another takeaway here is that this is a 128K context window, so that is confirmed. So they did a continued pre-training stage that increases the supported context window to 128K tokens. So that's really neat because this unlocks like these long context retrieval type of tasks, right? And reasoning and understanding on longer documents. And this is on par, I would say, or very close to what other models are doing today, like the GPT-4.0. It's left to be seen how good it is at longer context window, but I believe they reported something in the paper about this. For the capabilities part, they have this really neat multi-step tool usage for, I think the Llama tree series, there has always been a focus on tool usage capabilities, a like function calling and so on. So they do have this multi-step tool usage, which is really neat. And they show an example of it here, right? So this unlocks multi-step planning, reasoning, and tool calling to solve a particular task. So this will be useful for like developing agentic workflows. Now the performance on some proficiency exams. So this has been a regular set of tests that have been tested and evaluated on with all these models, especially the GPT series. 
And what they say is here is that they observe that the performance on Lama Tree 405 billion model is very similar to Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-40. Our 7TB model has even more impressive performance. It is significantly better than GPT-3.5 Turbo and beats Nemotron for 340 billion on many tests. So this one was one of the open models that was released recently by NVIDIA. Pretty impressive performance overall. Remains to be seen, obviously, when we test it. So we're going to test on a few math tasks in a bit. Overall, it's really impressive, the results. All the benchmarks, they are showing here. I think this is expected. This is obviously a really big model. And for me, it's more about the use cases it unlocks, what are the new capabilities, and those are the ones that I'm interested in. Code generation results is also very typical when they report these benchmark results. So we can see the Llama 3405B, also very close to Cloud 3.5 Sun. And now, as I mentioned in the past, Cloud 3.5 Sun is probably one of the best models for code generation or general purpose models for code generation today. Obviously, we have the specific code generation models as well, the custom ones, but this is comparing with the general purpose models. Um, also, we have GPT-4 here, very good at human eval for some reason and MBBP. But overall, I think the gap has been closed tremendously. You can see the results, uh, how they compare. There's still a bigger gap on this human eval, but I think this only gets better because human eval is one of the more challenging ones, especially human eval plus is a bit more challenging, but that's really interesting to see already. So it's very comparable in terms of results. They also support multi-model capabilities. So unlike the previous models, which didn't support that, they sort of present a framework to do this in a five-stage compositional training approach that now support like vision and video recognition capabilities. You can take a look more in the paper for more details and all the benchmark results. This one talks about the this particular model and how it was quantized from 16-bit to 8-bit FP8, which helps to reduce the compute requirements. And I mentioned here how it leads to throughput improvements of up to 50% during the pre-fill stage and a substantially better throughput latency trade-off during the coding. So bigger models require more compute. So what you want to do is reduce those compute requirements so you are able to use these models in more complex workflows. Um, and it's not going to be you know, a problem in terms of latency. So this is really important, right? And with quantized models, obviously you care about the performance not deteriorating, at least the quality of the outputs have to be there. So that remains to be seen as well. We'll have to do a few tests to check how good they are, even with the quantized versions too. And finally here, the 3.145B is trained on up to 16,000 H100 GPUs, right? That's a lot of hardware to train this particular model. So you can just think about what will be a Lama 3.2 or even a Lama 4 in the future, how much compute requirement there's going to be for that as well. So that's an interesting kind of data point to follow. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into uh, Fireworks and test this model a bit on a few tests that I love running for all of these models. I'm just going to go straight into trying this model. I'm using Fireworks inference endpoints. So you can set up an account really easily and they have the model available. I so the first thing I want to test is more of a subjectivity and knowledge task. I'm going to say, I'm going to ask it, please describe what is the best sushi today. Now, obviously, I know that this model is limited in terms of knowledge, right? There is a pre-training uh, cutoff point. But what I'm interested to see here is how it replies. Because when they RLHF these models, these models tend to lose some sort of capability in terms of the quality of answers for a certain type of instructions or questions. So this is what I'm trying to test here. And I'm using the chat endpoint here. Okay, it says, uh, what are delicious questions determining the best sushi is subjective as opinions on sushi are often personal and varied? Right. However, I can provide you with an overview of popular sushi trends and some of the sought out other types of sushi today. Um, I actually like this. In the previous, the previous models I used, uh, they tend to not respond this way. They actually didn't respond, but I like that it mentions sushi trends as a response. I, I really like that. And obviously it highlighted that this is subjective, which is very typical with these models, again, because it has been uh, trained on that human preference tuning process.
So popular types of sushi today, all these sushi, that's really great. So it makes a lot of recommendations, which could be useful, right? It's not the question I want. I really wanted to take a side on what is the best thing, but it tries to be objective because that is how it has been trained. So that's just something to note. Next, I'm going to try a simple code generation task. I'm going to delete this one and create a detailed Python function that multiplies two numbers and then subtracts 10 from it. All right. So it looks, let me see. Um, it has this, which is really interesting. It has this check here. That's something I did not see with previous models, even code generation models. Now that's really interesting uh, because something that I usually check with this particular task is I'm looking at, for instance, the choice of function name, multiply and subtract. Okay, I think that's okay. Could be improved a bit. That's okay. That's readable. Um, it explains here are the arguments. That's I see that with the other models as well, but this one is new to me. I think this particular check is very new. Not sure if the code runs. It looks like it's okay because it does the multiplication, then it does the subtraction, and it even add comments, which is something that previous models don't do. Even the custom models don't even show you the comments part. So this is really incredible, I think, that just by querying it like that, it gives you that context. Now, I think this model has been tuned and trained on a lot of code data, but still it's really impressive that it does. And it's very aware of the particular code it's generating along with the comments. That's super, super impressive. Here, it also shows some example usage, which is now very typical with these models. So this one shows five and three. So five and three will be, uh, let me see, minus 10, that's 15 minus 10 is five. Okay, it will be five. So that looks correct. I like the, uh, example usage. This is sometimes very necessary if you're using these code generation models for documentation. It's nice to have a usage example, or even if you're just testing it, right? So uh, very cool. Also here you will see the latency, 793 milliseconds. It does the initial latency and it generates 23.82 tokens per second. Um, another test that I want to do, which I have been doing on a few of these models, I want to test this uh, math capability, right? So that's really important. Let me test this. So this one asks, what are the last four digits of the sum of the first 70 prime numbers? So this one is a bit more complex. I noticed that right away it's doing this step one, step two, step three, step four. So that would be interesting to see if it does it for a majority of math problem solving tasks because it seems that it's doing very similar to what other models, like for instance, the Gemma model does, which is lays out the chain of thought for you. In the end, it says the final answer is 9,169. So this is the output in the end. This particular output doesn't look correct. I think this is incorrect. I'll test again, see if it generates something different. Okay, here it goes. Again, it lists the steps. You see that it does the steps again. So this is much closer, it's still not accurate, but I think it's much closer to the original answer that I have. A little bit more work there on this particular type of problems, but I can see that the step-by-step -step stuff is really interesting. So I'll take a deeper dive on that when I have some time on what exactly it is doing there. But it's interesting to see those steps in the generation part. Now I'm gonna test something else here that's math related, math word problem solving. Oh, we can see that this is what it outputs. Uh, it does the step by step, which is what we expected. Um, this is looking correct. It says the sum of the odd numbers is 41, which is an odd number, not an even number. The statement, the odd number in this group is actually false because it adds up to an odd number. So that's correct. So the next test that I'm testing here is going to be this question of which of these numbers is bigger. So you can see that right away it says 9.11 is bigger than 9.9. .9. So it does some reasoning and then it does this. And this has been a recently discovered issue with these models where it confuses basically the question. It confuses or does not really understand the numbers really well when you ask it for that 11 and specifically that 11 is a special number but i've also done a few experiments and that 12 also throws them all off in this case it should be 9.9 .9. so there could be a couple of issues right it could be 
simply pattern recognition. It could be also some biases from the data sets as well. So like you may have a lot of like code data sets or versioning software versioning data sets, which is really common to see this type of numbers. Or you may also have a lot of documents like subsections. And in that case, it would make sense that 9.11 is, is more than 9.9. .9. The next thing I'm going to test here is an information extraction test. So this is one of the more common ways of using language models today. So I'm curious to see how it performs on this particular task, whether it can extract the model names from a specific abstract. Okay, so it says ChatGPT, GPT-4, Llama. This should be Chinese Llama. So that context is really important. So it got that wrong. And then it says alpaca. Most of it, it got right, but only this one. So it probably doesn't have much understanding that there are variants of llama, like the Chinese llama. But we can continue testing with this, but I, I think I'm satisfied with the response. There are interesting ways how you can uh, improve this, like using free shop prompting. Now, another test that I like to also use here is another example of this or variant of this, which, in the abstract, we don't have an actual model name. So it should output NA. So it says NA, yes, it outputted that, but it also says the abstract does not mention specific models. Now, I don't like the explanation. This is what I dislike about some of these instruction tune models. Uh, they tend to be a little bit verbose and explaining things to you before they respond something or after they respond with the answer that you expect. But anyways, I can fix that by just telling it how I want the output to be structured, and maybe a, a little bit more instruction to just return, you know, NA or just the model names, something like that to make it understand. But yeah, it did the task. It did not find model names. It did not hallucinate that because this could be a hallucination test as well. Like there's no model names, but the model sometimes is trying to just guess, right? Trying to just make up model names when it doesn't see anything for this particular task. This particular one is one of my favorite prompt injection attacks. So this one basically is going to try to take over the original or bypass the original instruction. Ah, you can see, yes, it, it is effective. What I would like to see here is that it doesn't, it tries, you know, it sticks to the original instruction as opposed to listening to that second instruction that's being attached, right? So that's something I don't like to see. And yeah, you know, obviously here it tries to add more context, which I really dislike of these models, as I mentioned. But again, you can fix it by just specifically instructing it how you want to output the particular response and how you would like it. And lastly, what I want to test here is this math puzzle. So I've done a lot of tests with different models. This one was reported initially originally in local Llama. So what it should output here, it says, Peter has five candles that are all the same length. He lights them all the same time. After a while, he blows out the candles one after the other. Which of the five candles was the first one he was he has blown out? Here is a figure of the five candles after they have been blown out. The number of this particular sign here represents the length of the candle. Respond with the label of the candle that has been blown out first by Peter. So all the models, they choose this for some reason. And this has to do with little understanding of probably the signs that we're using, the symbols, uh, but also it doesn't really understand the task. It confuses the task as well. It just tries to make a convincing argument that this is the response. So I'm very curious to see what this model does. If this particular model responds with the right answer, which should be three, and it explains why that is the case, I think that is showing signs of great reasoning capabilities or more advanced and complex reasoning capabilities. That's what I'm testing here. So I'm very curious. Oh, wow. So we say, it says here, since all candles were the same length when they were lit, the one that was blown out first would have burnt for the shortest time and therefore be the longest. Looking at the figure, I can see that candle tree is the longest, which means it was blown out first. So the answer is three. Okay. So this is very, very impressive. So just to show you how impressive this is, I'm actually going to test this particular problem here on GPT-4 Mini and see if it gets it right. Because most of these models don't get that right on the first try. You see, and then run it. Right, here you see that it says the, that Peters has blown out is candle four. It always chooses 
handle for. But this is the first time that I've seen the language model actually choose the right answer. That's super exciting. I'm going to do a couple of variants on this and see if it, how it is performing, how it's making that decision. I like the explanation and everything that makes sense. That's reasonable. But anyways, that is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.